you know what, I think in life in general, preconceived ideas can be pretty dangerous. And in golf in particular, there's a lot of clubs that arrive that I kind of take one glance at and for whatever reason I decide, well, probably they're not for me. And in this case, I received a club from TaylorMade, almost didn't bother testing it because I just know historically, I've always struggled with this golf club. But you know what, maybe I was wrong. So before I get onto my preconceptions in terms of golf clubs, I want to know what yours are. So down below in the comments, I've got a club in my hand. What do you think it is? What do you think is probably the one club that the majority of golfers, certainly average golfers, would never go near because they simply don't think they've got the capability to use it? Right, this is the club in hand that is not the one I'm going to review, but it is paid heavily in terms of the demise of the club that I'm going to review. This is, of course, a hybrid, and the introduction of hybrids has really been a killer of the said club. But this is a two hybrid, it's 17 degrees. We're playing off the tee, and in theory, this should be far easier than the club in question. But you know what? It just might be that this new model from TaylorMade has changed things significantly and maybe a two and three hybrid can be challenged by a different club in the bag, one that you'd never expect. Yeah, so in recent years we've seen the resurgence of driving irons and that's what I have in my hand from TaylorMade, it's their P790 UDI, it's a two iron, like I said, two or three years ago I'd have never gone near this thing because it's literally, well it looks like a bit of a butter knife, it's a two iron, it's got 17 degrees worth of loft on it. We just don't like long irons anymore, but I think with these kind of, the way in which technology has changed, particularly with the sort of foam filled hollow body irons we've seen in recent years from, I know Callaway have got one in their range, the likes of Strix and Springs to mind, Titleist again have got one in their range. And obviously this uh, P790 has been right at that forefront. It looks absolutely stunning. It's the kind of club that I would really like to have in my bag, but I'm always scared off because like I said, my preconception of this is, I can't go anywhere near it because I cannot get the numbers out of it that I want. I'll struggle to launch it. All the kind of things we'd associate with average golfers trying to play two irons. But let me tell you what you're about to see in terms of numbers and performance from me is there could be a bit of a shift that suggests that maybe some of us at least can consider putting this in the bag. I'm going to start hitting some balls, collect some data, and I'll share with you why I think the resurgence of driving irons might mean they can make their way into your bag. Right, so the plan is this. I'm going to collect data with the two iron, and then I've also got the two hybrid. They're identical in terms of the loft, but the natural things we would expect, or I would expect at least anyway, is the two hybrid will probably launch higher. I would imagine it would go further. I imagine I would get greater ball speeds out of it. They're all the things that, and I haven't hit the two hybrid yet, but I have got data off of this two iron, which is the bit that surprised me and led me into this video, to be honest with you. But what I wanted to talk about was, I mean, that dress, it's exactly what you'd expect. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's almost, it's a blade-like iron almost. There's a bit of a heavier top line because, again, it's got that sort of P790 top line about it. But there's nothing behind the ball whatsoever. And it's the kind of club that we're kind of scared of. Uh, but, and I was scared of it, but what I did when I started to hit a few balls, and we'll start off with, let's just get one going. You hear the crack out of it. I've absolutely buttoned that, to be fair. The biggest shock that I had, I'll give you these numbers in a second, too. the biggest shock that I had was the ball flight. I'm playing this off of a little bit of a tee, and I think we'll talk about flexibility of the club shortly. That's just got 87 club head speed, ball speed's 128, 204 carry, launched at 18 degrees. They're kind of numbers that first of all shocked me. I'm not associating a two iron with those kind of numbers. And trust me, I've hit now, um, whatever it is, eight to 10 balls. And we've got similar kind of numbers. The consistency has been good. But the other interesting thing is kind of like how it sounds and feels. I love a long iron. I think with this kind of forged hollow body, it's, it's exactly the same as what you get out of the regular P790. It's not pure forge for me, there's a little bit of a click in there, but it's okay, you know, it's more than acceptable. And I'd rather be hitting this than a hybrid. If you can hit one of these pure, and believe me, that lost shot that I just hit was absolutely out of the screws, then it's a great, great feeling. 
But like I said, the biggest shock is the fact that how can this thing be launching at 18 degrees and carrying 204? I mean, yet again, that is absolutely buttoned. I will say as well, there is a magical tip that's been going on in our tip series. It's absolute my transform my iron striking right now. So if you've not been watching them, go and check out our testing the tip series because honestly, I've been trying some of these tips out myself out there on the course and here again this morning and it has made a massive difference to what I'm doing. But anyway, we're not on about that, but maybe, maybe that's why I'm striking a two iron better than I could ever believe. And hit this, I'm just going to switch over very quickly into that hybrid and explain to you what the differences are and why you might choose one over the other. Right, so very much back to where we started this video and this is the long iron killer. It's the hybrid and believe me, over recent years and maybe I don't know what it is now, 10 or 15 years, maybe more than that, the introduction of this has made golf so much easier for a majority of average golfers. And the idea of playing a 17 degree club would certainly be hybrid over long iron. And when you place them behind the ball, the first thing is the confidence level. I mean, obviously, you know, having that sort of larger head gives you that breeds that bit of confidence, the, the greater mass, if you like, behind the ball. The ability for the manufacturer to put the CG as far back as it is, then obviously it's gonna launch higher. I say obviously, but it doesn't. And that's the biggest surprise. I'm gonna hit a ball with it, I don't want to give away the kind of numbers at the end, but this has been the biggest shock. We've played off a tee from word go. I'll hit another ball and I'll tell you what again, I think of the differences in terms of... Well, I'm swinging the ball really good this morning, or the club really well this morning. Went really good off the face. Love ping G425s, hard to be critical of this club range whatsoever. Fairly easy swing and I think mentally at least, you don't feel as though you have to go after a hybrid as much as you do a two iron. But then again, that's just something that resonates in the brain. But I think we need to stop talking about what are the differences and why am I so shocked at what TaylorMade have done with this UDI. And the only way to really explain that, I'm afraid, is in data. And uh, that's where we'll go. And I'll show you why, like I said, I'm so surprised at this UDI from TaylorMade. Yeah, I'm afraid this one is very much data-led. So I'm going to start off with the numbers of the two hybrid, and I think they were kind of where I'd expect them to be. Um, 85 mile an hour club head speed, ball speed at 130 on average, 201 on average carry, launching at 13.3 with a peak height of 78, spinning at 3.4. There's a couple of things to highlight in there is when we did get the club head speed up to sort of, uh, there's one there, 80 or two on the bounce, 87 mile an hour. And we got up to 2.11 and 2.14 carries, which are really long balls for me with a two hybrid. And then ball speeds are 133, 134, 135. Incredible. I think the thing that shocked me a little bit, like I said, maybe didn't shock me, what I would expect from the two hybrid, but then when I go on and tell you what happened from the two iron, where the shock came in, the launch on average was 13.3. And it was fairly consistent, to be honest with you, along the, what is it, nine shots that I hit. It launched at, uh, I'd say, that 13.3, and from 17 degrees, that's pretty fair. But, like I said, those numbers, really, really good. I would have come off of a review of the two hybrid from Ping G425, and I'd have said it was fantastic, and it was doing all the things you'd expect it to do. So, two iron numbers were where, like I said, the surprise comes in. I'm going to go over the averages, first of all, and compare them both. So 86 mile an hour in terms of that club head speed, 128 ball speed, 198 carry, 16.6 .6 launch and spinning at 3.5, peak height at 95. Now when you run them against the two sets of numbers, you'll see there's some glaring differences. Club head speed remained pretty similar, ball speed slightly quicker off that larger head of the hybrid, carry just that little bit further again with the hybrid. But the launch was the big, big surprise for me to get a two iron launch in. And I'm talking about now, don't forget, a modern day two iron. These are the differences that with a foam filled hollow body, you would have never or I would have never achieved an average of 16.6 .6 degrees of launch angle off an old two iron. And that's why I would have dismissed this club uh, two or three years ago, never even gone near it. And then spinning at three and a half thousand revs, so it's kind of doing all the things that 
you would want from a long iron but never had the cap or again i'm talking about my perspective what you'd want from a long iron but never really had the capabilities of achieving in terms of numbers so i'd have been two iron low absolute knuckle ball would have struggled to get it out the air low low spin i mean okay chasing down a hard links fairway but this is a different that's a different club altogether now we're looking at and those kind of numbers like i said really did surprise me as to how much these clubs have come on and the real lesson was not whether or not not everyone no one's going to go out not no one the majority of us are not going to go out and start putting two irons in the bag the idea of this video is to highlight that maybe we're all a bit dismissive we've got preconceived ideas of things that we used to know in the past and have kept them in our memories and sort of steer away from clubs and it clearly shows that definitely without a shadow of a doubt modern technology has played a major part in why that two iron is now very playable whereas it would never have been able to go near my bag with my kind of club head speeds i don't want to waffle on forever here but what i will finish off by saying is don't get me wrong you still the ideal player that, that two iron is suited for is somebody with a much higher club head speed than mine they're going to get some fantastic um numbers out of that and it's a great club for them to play off the tee and still like i said the hybrid is more versatile as well as another thing that i didn't mention and more suited to this kind of player but i would say that for me it's the best two iron that i've tried in recent years it was the by far the highest launching and all those numbers made it a really positive review um, and like i said shocked me all together and maybe i won't be dismissive of two irons in the future anyway that's me done as ever sorry for waffling on a bit there as ever thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it more of a lesson learned than anything else but uh give me your comments down below do you go near these kind of clubs would you dismiss this club would you even consider trying it when you next go into the driving range and uh, that'll do thumbs up is the other one and thanks for watching i'll see you soon